Once upon a moonless night, in a remote coastal village, there stood an old lighthouse. Its towering silhouette was a testament to the relentless battle between land and sea, a sentinel that warned sailors of treacherous waters. The villagers often spoke of the tales that the sea whispered to those who listened closely, tales of terror and the unknown. One chilling evening, as the wind howled through the ancient trees, a fisherman named Samuel, marked by his wrinkled face and eyes that had witnessed a lifetime of storms, embarked on a daring journey. He set sail on his rickety boat, the siren's fate, in pursuit of a legendary catch that could make him a legend among the village's fishermen. Samuel navigated the inky black waters with an experienced hand, the lighthouse's eerie glow the only source of comfort in the desolation. As he ventured deeper into the abyss, the sea began to change. The waves grew taller and angrier, and the water took on a sinister, oily sheen. He could swear he heard whispers, faint, indistinguishable, and haunting. Hours turned into days, and Samuel's boat was drawn further and further into the void. His unease deepened, but the allure of the legendary catch held him captive. One night, the sea presented him with his prize a colossal, otherworldly creature that defied description. Its eyes were cavernous voids, and its scales shimmered like the night sky. Samuel trembled as he threw his net over the monstrous entity, but it was too late to escape its clutches. The creature rose from the depths, towering above him, casting an impenetrable shadow over the boat. In that shadow, Samuel saw the anguished faces of countless sailors who had met a similar fate. They were the victims of the malevolent sea, their souls forever imprisoned within the creature's colossal body. The whispers he had heard were the cries of the damned, echoing for eternity. The creature's maw opened wide, revealing a vortex that seemed to lead to the very depths of the underworld. Samuel's heart raced as he realized he was about to become one of the sea's cursed souls. In his final moments, he recalled the lighthouse's eerie glow, a beacon that had both warned and beckoned, and he understood the sea's cruel, age-old game. As Samuel's boat was pulled into the abyss, the lighthouse's light grew dim, as if mourning the loss of another soul to the insatiable sea. And once more, the whispers of the abyssal depths danced upon the waves, a haunting lament to those who dared to challenge the mysteries of the sea. To this day, the villagers speak of the lighthouse, and the daring fishermen who never returned from the deep, haunted waters, reminding all who listen that the sea is a merciless, unfathomable force, hiding horrors beyond human comprehension. Decades passed, but the legend of Samuel and the malevolent sea remained etched in the collective memory of the coastal village. Fear had firmly taken root in the hearts of the villagers, and they dared not venture too far out into the ocean's dark abyss. Among those who had heard the whispers of the sea was a young woman named Eliza. She was born into the village, and her curiosity about the enigmatic lighthouse had grown since childhood. Her father, a fisherman himself, had often warned her about the cursed waters and the monstrous creature that lay beneath, always ready to claim the unwary. Eliza, however, was a spirited and daring soul. The tales of the sea's malevolence only fueled her desire to uncover the truth. With each passing year, she became more determined to unravel the secrets of the lighthouse, its eerie glow serving as an irresistible beacon to her inquisitive mind. One gloomy evening, under the cover of darkness, Eliza donned her father's old fishing gear, lit a lantern, and set out to sea. She navigated her small boat, the Sea Whisperer, beyond the village's protective cove, where the legendary creature had been said to lurk. As Eliza sailed farther into the abyss, the sea seemed to come alive. Whispers, soft and chilling, caressed her ears, telling tales of lost souls and the malevolent entity that ruled the deep. The lighthouse, with its cryptic allure, grew brighter as she approached. The whispers grew louder, and Eliza felt as though the very ocean itself was speaking to her. It beckoned, 
promising to reveal the truth that had eluded so many before her. Her heart pounded, torn between fear and fascination, as she anchored her boat and dove into the water. With each descent, the sea's murmurings grew more profound, revealing the secrets of the abyss. Eliza saw the colossal creature, imprisoned beneath the waves, its monstrous form writhing in eternal agony. It was an embodiment of the sea's malevolence, the keeper of countless lost souls. Eliza understood the curse that had gripped her village for generations. She realized that Samuel and others like him were not victims of fate, but were lured by the sea's cryptic whispers, drawn into its clutches, and condemned to become a part of its nightmarish existence. With newfound knowledge came a sense of responsibility. Eliza knew she had to break the cycle. With all her strength, she swam toward the lighthouse and ignited her lantern, casting a brilliant, blinding light into the depths. The sea roared and the creature writhed in pain as the light seared its monstrous form. Eliza's resolve remained unshaken as she continued to shine her lantern's light, dispelling the darkness that had trapped the cursed souls and the malevolent entity. In a final, desperate act, the creature lunged at Eliza, but her courage and determination prevailed. The light grew brighter, and the creature, with a soul-piercing wail, disintegrated into a million shards of iridescent scales. The sea grew calm, and the whisper ceased. The village was finally free from the malevolent sea's grip, and Eliza, the sea whisperer, had broken the curse that had haunted her people for generations. As the years passed, the lighthouse's eerie glow remained, but it was no longer a harbinger of doom. It had become a symbol of hope, a reminder of Eliza's bravery, and a beacon of light that guided sailors safely home. The sea, once a source of fear, was now respected and revered, its secrets finally uncovered, and its malevolence vanquished by a courageous young woman who had faced the abyss and emerged victorious. The small, coastal town of Whispering Pines had long been plagued by eerie legends surrounding the sea. Tales of ghostly ships and spectral figures that roamed the shoreline at night filled the air. But one legend stood out above all others, the haunting serenade of the sea. At the heart of these stories was the old widow, Mises Abigail Stone. She lived in a decrepit cottage, perched atop a cliff overlooking the tumultuous waters. For years, she had been seen wandering the shorelines, her silver hair trailing in the wind, and her eyes forever fixed on the endless horizon. Locals claimed she had lost her sanity, mesmerized by the alluring but terrifying call of the sea. One gloomy autumn evening, a young woman named Isabella arrived in Whispering Pines, drawn by the mysterious tales that shrouded the town. She had heard of Mises Stone's legendary seashell collection, a collection rumored to contain shells that could capture the voices of the lost souls at sea. Isabella's curiosity led her to the widow's cottage, where she hoped to unravel the truth behind the haunting serenade of the sea. The widow, with her wild, uncombed hair and piercing, distant gaze, welcomed Isabella with an air of mystique. She spoke of the sea's siren call, its ethereal music that had lured countless sailors to their doom. Mises Stone claimed that her seashell collection held the key to the ocean's secret songs. Each shell had been carefully chosen from the shoreline, each containing a unique, eerie melody. Isabella's heart raced as the widow handed her a delicate, conch-shaped seashell. She placed it to her ear and listened, and her senses were immediately overwhelmed by a symphony of haunting, otherworldly voices. She could hear the sorrowful whispers of lost souls, forever adrift in the sea's unforgiving embrace. Isabella became obsessed with the seashells, spending days and nights listening to the lamenting voices of the abyss. The more she listened, the more she felt herself being drawn toward the shoreline, unable to resist the siren call of the sea. One moonless night, compelled by an irresistible force, Isabella followed the ghostly figures that had long haunted the coast. 
They led her to a hidden cove, shrouded in darkness, where the sea itself seemed to come alive. It churned and swirled, revealing a surreal and eerie vision an underwater realm filled with ethereal, glowing sea creatures that danced to the haunting serenade of the sea. Isabella watched in awe as the spectral figures sang their mournful song, entranced by the ocean's secrets. But as the first light of dawn began to break, she realized the peril she was in. The sea was ready to claim her as another lost soul, forever to be part of its spectral chorus. With all her might, Isabella hurled the seashell into the water. The voices grew louder, more haunting, as if mourning the loss of their newfound companion. Yet, in the end, the call was broken, and the sea released its grip on her. Gasping for breath, Isabella returned to the shore, the sun rising on the horizon. She had escaped the clutches of the sea's serenade, but would forever carry the echoes of its haunting melody in her heart. As the years went by, Isabella became the town's guardian, warning travelers of the sea's allure and the widow's seashell collection. The legends of Whispering Pines persisted, a reminder that the sea held mysteries beyond human understanding, and that its haunting serenade was a force to be respected and feared. The legends of Whispering Pines continued to draw both curious adventurers and those seeking the eerie, ethereal experience of the sea's haunting serenade. Isabella's cautionary tales served as a powerful reminder of the danger lurking in the ocean's depths. One summer night, a group of thrill-seekers arrived in the town. They came in search of the infamous seashell collection, eager to test their courage and challenge the sea's mesmerizing call. Mises Stone, now even older and more enigmatic, welcomed them into her cottage, the shells glistening with an eerie, supernatural allure. As the group listened to the haunting melodies emanating from the seashells, the widow's eyes glinted with an otherworldly wisdom. She watched the adventurers, her expression a mix of fascination and sorrow. She had been the keeper of these voices for so long, a custodian of the sea's dark secrets. One by one, the thrill-seekers began to feel the irresistible pull of the sea, their gazes fixed on the restless waves beyond the cottage window. The widow observed, her heart heavy with the knowledge of what awaited them, for she knew the seductive and treacherous nature of the ocean all too well. As the moon rose high in the sky, the group ventured to the shoreline, unable to resist the enchanting call that had captured their hearts. They followed the ghostly figures, each step taking them closer to the hidden cove where the sea's supernatural choir awaited. With the first eerie notes of the serenade, they realized the depths of their predicament. The voices, a melancholic chorus of the lost, seemed to promise the allure of the unknown, but the truth was far darker. The sea intended to claim their souls, just as it had so many before. Isabella, who had been monitoring their adventure from afar, knew she had to act. She raced to the shoreline, carrying with her a lantern and a song a powerful, haunting melody passed down through generations. As she sang the ancient song, her voice wove through the sea's serenade, creating a dissonance that shattered the enchantment. The sea's song grew erratic, its hold over the adventurers weakening. They stumbled back from the shore, the ghostly figures fading into the inky water. With each verse of Isabella's song, the ocean's power diminished until, at last, the last haunting echo died away. The adventurers, shaken but alive, returned to Whispering Pines with a newfound appreciation for the widow's seashell collection and Isabella's wisdom. They shared their tale with the townspeople, a testament to the enduring mystery of the sea and the bravery required to face its enigmatic allure. Whispering Pines, with its legends and its guardian in Isabella, continued to thrive as a coastal town, forever respectful of the sea's unfathomable secrets. And Mises Stone, now free from her role as the keeper of the voices, watched the horizon with a sense of peace, her heart unburdened by the haunting serenade that had held her captive for so long. In a remote coastal village named Raven Shadow, 
perched precariously at the edge of the world, there stood a lighthouse like no other. Its ancient structure had been weathered by centuries of relentless storms and endless tides, but it remained an enduring sentinel, warding off the unrelenting horrors that lurked beneath the surface of the sea. The villagers whispered tales of the cursed waters that surrounded them, a realm where vengeful spirits and malevolent creatures roamed. But it was the haunting, ghostly ship known as the Black Mariner that sent shivers down their spines. It was said to be captained by a cursed soul who, in life, had made a pact with the sea and, in death, sought to claim other souls in recompense. One fateful night, a fearless fisherman named Robert set sail in his humble fishing boat, the Storm Rider, defying the warnings of the village elders. His wife had fallen ill, and he was determined to catch a legendary fish rumored to have miraculous healing properties. He sailed under the pale light of the moon, with the haunted lighthouse as his only companion. As Robert ventured deeper into the abyss, the sea transformed. The waves grew monstrous and restless, and an eerie mist enveloped his boat. He felt an oppressive presence, as though unseen eyes watched his every move. The whispers that had been the village's darkest secret now became his reality, echoing in his ears, eerie and relentless. Days turned into nights, and the fisherman's obsession with the legendary catch grew. He knew he was close when he saw the black mariner emerge from the depths, its tattered sails billowing in the ghostly breeze. The cursed ship, helmed by the captain of the damned, drew near, casting a cold shadow upon Robert's boat. In the distance, he could hear the anguished wails of the lost souls who were held captive on the spectral ship. They pleaded for release, their voices a chilling cacophony. The captain, an empty-eyed figure with a skeletal hand, extended his bony fingers toward Robert. Realization struck like a bolt of lightning. The legendary fish he had sought was a ruse, a trap set by the malevolent sea. He had become another pawn in the cursed game between the captain of the Black Mariner and the sea itself. With his heart pounding and desperation in his eyes, Robert realized that his only chance for survival was to navigate the treacherous waters and escape the cursed ship's clutches. He maneuvered the storm rider with skill and cunning, dodging the spectral crew and the ominous sea creatures sent to claim him. The lighthouse on the horizon flickered, as if beckoning him home. With a final surge of will, Robert sailed past the cursed ship, evading the black mariner's grasp. The spirits of the sea wailed in frustration as he sped toward the safety of the village shore. Robert's return was met with astonishment and gratitude from the villagers. He had narrowly escaped the abyssal depths, and in doing so, he had exposed the malevolent game played by the sea itself. The lighthouse's eerie glow, once a harbinger of doom, now represented a guardian of hope. Raven Shadow would forever remember the courage of the fisherman who had faced the abyss and lived to tell the tale. The haunting legends of the village persisted, but the villagers now understood the sea's treacherous nature and respected its power. And as the years passed, the lighthouse continued to stand tall, an enduring sentinel that watched over the village, its light a reminder of the relentless struggle between land and sea, and the enduring spirit of those who dared to defy the abyss.